This is a package that I've created. It's got a little for each loop that does a few things here. Uh, checks for some files, uh, loads them into a, a database, audits the file names, and then archives those files also. You can download this package uh, with the white paper. In fact, when you download the white paper, you, it's actually a zip file, and this package along with all the other code is included with that also. All right, so if we run this package, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, go over here and right click on the package, and that's actually the wrong one. That's the error one. Let's run this one. And let's watch it run. Make sure it runs fine here. Yep, no issues. You can see it turning green and yellow. It's running through the loops here, one for each one of those files. And that worked great. I can also, I also have a reset package here, which and basically what that does is it moves all my package, all my files back from the archive location back to their home location, and then it also truncates these tables here to clean them up. So I'm going to go ahead and run the reset package here and reset the package back to normal. There we go. And that reset package is included with the uh, the files that you get with the white paper also. Okay, so I just want to make sure everything's running fine. It looks like it ran great. All right, so we want to log this information. We want to know what's going on. We want to know the files that are uh, pushing through here and uh, how, many, how long it's taking the package to run and information like that. So we can do that with the logging that's built into SSIS. Let's look at that first. I'm going to right click in the background here and click on logging. And here's our log providers for SSIS. First thing you need to do, you need to put a check marks next to the package up here, which you want to log. And then on the drop-down menu here, we have some choices for logging. So we can log this information. It can be written to the Windows event log. It can be written to text files, XML files, uh, SQL Server tables, and you can even send it to a SQL Server profiler. Today, we're going to talk about sending them to text files and send them to SQL Server. So let's do the text files first. I'll go ahead and select text file here, and we'll click on Add. Place the check marks next to the provider here, to the uh, log provider. And we're going to need to select a location where we want to log this at. Now, I have a location I already created on my package. If you look down here, log.txt, which is going to a location I created on my machine here. And so I'm going to select that log location there, log.txt. It's basically just a text file. That's all it is. We'll click on OK. Let's save this, and then we'll run the package again now with the logging turned on. There we go. It's going to go through all my files again. There we go, no issues at all. We'll then stop this package from debugging. And let's take a look at this log file. It's in uh, C test log.txt. So let's go find that file. I think I have it right here. There's log.txt. Let's open it up, expand this out. And that's a lot of information there. Look at that. So you can see uh, right off the bat here one of the problems with this. Uh, this log file logs a lot of information here. And you can see it's got the on pre-execute, post-execute, pre-execute, there's a warning, and it's got lots of information here, including all these GUIDs in here over and over and over again. It shows that information. Uh, up here, it's got uh, the event, computer, operator, source. So it's, it's trying to treat it like a uh, CSV. Uh, it actually does come out as a CSV, but there's a problem with uh, having this as a CSV, is a lot of times you're going to have commas in the uh, information. So things like uh, the date and time may have commas in it, or the error messages for sure will have commas in them. So they don't quite come up right. So if I close this, and I'm going to try opening that text file with Excel. So I'm going to open Excel, and we'll go to File, Open, and go to that same location on my C drive here, under Test, and we'll set to All Files. There it is. We'll open that up. I'm going to say it's a delimited file, and we'll click Next. It's a comma delimited file, not tab. Click Next and Finish. And now the information is broken up a little easier to read. Now, now we can see the events, we can see the computer, uh, you can see the operator, the source. Here's the source IDs. We don't really need those. I'll close those up a little bit. Execution ID, same thing. I wouldn't uh, close those up a little bit. Our start time and end time for the packages. Uh, not the actual entire package, but for the event that's being fired here. So you'll see that the start time and end time almost always are the same number here. So uh, and that's because the post-execute event, pre-execute event uh, run uh, almost instantaneously. So you're not going to see much difference there. Uh, data code, we don't need that, and data bytes. And there's our message right there. So there's our message information. And if we scroll over a little bit, you see it kind of goes way off the screen here. Lots of information. If there's any commas that show up inside of here, now it's going to break this up into multiple columns. So if you have uh, one co comma somewhere in this message, now you end up with two columns here instead of one. 
uh, which of course can be problematic when you're trying to parse through any kind of error messages or look at this information. All right, so that's one way to do some sort of logging and tracking of your packages there. But you can see there's a lot of limitations to this. If we go back to the logging here on our package, go back to logging, and we click on the log provider and go to details here, there's the options here for what events we want to log. So of course we'd want to log on air. So if any error occurs, we definitely want to see that. But maybe we don't want to log all the pipeline information. This would be the uh, the number of rows going through the data flow. Maybe we don't want to see that information. Uh, maybe we don't have a data flow on our package. Uh, Post-execute and pre-execute. That's going to be post-execute and pre-execute for each task in the package. Maybe we do or don't need that information also. And lots of other options that you have here also. If you click on the advanced tab at the bottom right here, you'll see there's some options here for each individual event that we have, we can select what we'd like to log. So we can log the computer name, we can log the operator name, and over here is our source ID, source ID, our message text, data bytes. So we can decide what we want to see here. So instead of logging the source ID, which is just like, wait, I don't really need, I can uncheck this and I can check the source name instead, get the name of it. That might give me some better information there. But either way, you're still going to see lots and lots of information from that because it logs the pre-execute, post-execute, all that information for each one of the tasks that run. And a lot of times you'll see these things run for the, pa for the package level and for the task level. So you may see multiple uh, lines in here duplicated. For example, here's a data flow column zip uh, with a length of 50 to database column zip. Uh, so truncation may occur on this is what I'm, the message I'm getting here. It's telling me that I'm, I've got a length of 50 coming in and it's going to a length of 5. That's just a warning. It means that actually happened. I didn't have any uh, data come in that was uh, at length of 50, everything was a 5. But you'll see I see that message again and again and again and again. And maybe that's something I don't want to see over and over again. That's something that's going to uh, fill this log up. Lots of information there. Also possible failure reasons here for results into. You'll see that repeated again and again and again with all these different error messages here. And if we scroll back up here, uh, of course you get the date and the time of, of when these things run also. And if we scroll down, get past uh, this. My go to meetings in the way here, so I'm going to scroll the hard way. And there we go. And there, there's my actual run from today. So it's actually appending it to this log here. So this is today's date and the time that we're running this now. And at the top, you saw it was yesterday's date and the time from yesterday. So this is appending to this log file. And this, so this log file can grow quite big here. And I've only run this package just a few times. Now it is looping through a, few, a couple dozen files there, so it is doing a lot of work. But it is a, a relatively small package though, and you see you get a lot of information just from this uh, one small package.